Hi, welcome to Maverick Mindcast. Uh, my guest today is Christiana Van Wyk. She's a Dutch filmmaker and a producer, and her most recent work is on the iconic platform, including but not limited to films such as Divine Intervention, The Wisdom Keepers, The Blueprint, and the series The Messengers. Welcome, Christiana. It's so wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for inviting me, and awesome that you're doing this. Oh, well, it's a pleasure. Uh, so I'm just curious to know, I want to get started about like kind of the beginning. Take me back to the beginning of when you knew you wanted to live a creative life and kind of how you went about doing it. Well, I guess kids are by nature creative, really, until it gets sort of programmed out of them in school. But I guess some kids are a little bit more prone to staying creative and staying in the, in the, more in the right side of the brain. And um, so I started off like every normal kid being creative, um, but it was just so strong that um, there was no other way but to go in the direction that I went. And that already started with um, when I was quite young, I think it was eight or nine, I saw the, the movie Annie. This was oh. in, in the eighties and I watched it and I was like, that's it, I'm going to be an actress. I wanted to be in front of the camera first. And then I think it was that same year, the first video camera came out. Uh. And my dad loved gadgets. So he bought that video camera. Well, of course that was it. <laughs> that was all I did. So I wrote my first sort of film script at the age of nine, then asked the kids in the classroom to be acting in it. And of course my dad was bombarded into cameraman and chauffeur and you know, whatever <laughs> needed happening. And um, so every weekend, bless his heart, you know, he, he used to work in Switzerland most of the time, but when he would come back, in the, um, he, he, he was there for us in the weekends, you know, and he just stood behind that camera, like all the time. It was a second job. <laughs> it was a second job. And, um, and I found out that I'm actually better behind the camera than in front of the camera. I did a lot of, um, already as a kid, I, I presented a TV, program and I played in a, in a TV series as well when I was 14 um, but it was I was it was never really a great talent that I had even though I really wanted to do it because I loved going into other worlds and, and and feeling what it's like to be a completely different person and experiencing what you know what life is like through their eyes um, but I had to find out later in life that it wasn't my true talent I, and, and realized I have to go I have to go behind the camera. So there you go. Well, if I do say so myself, I've seen you give interviews in front of the camera and I think you're, you're great. So maybe just not in the, the acting capacity, but in interviews. Yeah, I mean, I like, I like interviews. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I do like interviews. I do like to engage and interact with someone um, when the subject's really, you know, a subject that I love to, to talk about or listen to. Um, but yeah, it's definitely the acting is all about being able to let go and, and allowing yourself to be completely taken over by something else. And there's, I'm always slightly reserved, I find. And I think the best actors, when you see them, they just completely let go and they just, they become it. And it's something I really admire. I've always said, if I have to come back to planet earth again, I'd, I'd like to be a musician or an actor, you know, a talented one. Awesome. But yeah. But so I did, did uh, yeah, go sorry. Ahead, sorry. Well, you go. No, you go. It, it well, I was just going to say that um, I didn't straight away go for it because I don't know. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's the same for a lot of people. It's also about having the confidence to follow a certain path that is not conventional, you know, and to say, I want to become a filmmaker. You know, you have to really believe in yourself because it's not an easy, easy path to take. Um, so I started a normal university degree first and I kind of did that to please my dad and because um, he was always like, you know, he was always seeing me as, you know, a businesswoman, like, he, you know, he was a businessman and uh, I really wanted his acknowledgement all my life, you know, I, I always looked really up to him, I was, I was just like, wow, my dad. So I did that course, which had nothing to do with film. It was, it was communication management. 
And I absolutely was so unbelievably bored the whole time. I, I mean, it started off with boredom and then it slowly and gradually on became depression because I was just like, what am I doing here? There's no meaning in this. I mean, it's just, I, I didn't know how to give it a meaning and it was absolutely destroying my life force and my energy. And I remember during that course, I started to make a little entry video for the Film Academy. And uh, I loved doing it, you know, like I, I, I found the actors and I got a video camera and I was like, this is what I want to do. I love it. I love it. And the actors loved it. And I, I actually played a little story of Roald Dahl. Um, and, and I was like, Dad, I want to quit this course. I want to go to Film Academy. This is what I'm meant to be doing. And, and he was like, well, I, you know, you need to be really good for that, you know? And so he didn't really fill me with, with confidence. And I don't think he did that on purpose. I think he really did it because he was, you know, it's a very Dutch thing, I guess, where we have to feel very secure in everything we do and everything, every decision we make in Holland, it's, it's, it has to be, you know, based on, on, on safety and security. So he said, why don't you finish your course and then we'll have a look at going to, to film school. But after I finally finished that course, I was completely devoid of inspiration. He kind of backtracked a little bit on that. He didn't remember that conversation. And, <laughs> and I, by that time, I was just like, couldn't be bothered anymore, you know? And I had many years of um, just really not, you know, being a loser, basically. <laughs> if you, if you, if you, you know, like in my twenties, I just, you just, you know, went from job to job and nothing, nothing felt in inspiring to me. And it was only, a little later after my well, my father died young he died when I was in my mid-20s mm -hmm. and it was only then while I was in this grieving period and I was living in in Wales in in England I I, I was like no I, I have to do something with this because this is crazy why you know why shouldn't I even if I'm not good it doesn't mean I cannot become good or or better at it as long as I'm inspired to do it so I then decided uh, at the age of 31, it had to take that long, right? <laughs> of, yeah. of making that choice. I moved to Brighton and I still had this thing of like, I wanna do either filmmaking or acting. So I thought I'll start with drama school. And I started with drama school, I did one year. And again, you know, it, I, it was confirmed again. It's like, no, I love it, but I, the talent's just not quite there. So I ended up going to film school the year later and everything just switched after that. As soon as I walked in the door there and the school year started, I was there all the time, you know, even after classes, I would stay on. We would go there in the weekends, just playing around with cameras. And uh, it was a very technical school at the time. And I, I just couldn't, I, I, I was just in love, completely in love. I was like, this is it, this is me. But I, if I need to stop talking, by the way, you, you just tell me because I'm, I'm just no, going. That was actually exactly my next word, like totally in tune, because that's what I was going to say. How did you pursue, you know, your passion and your talent yeah. right now? So, no, you're perfect. Yeah, but I can imagine you'd also want to know, like, how did the, the subjects that I film about come along? Because. Yeah, but there's time for that. I mean, cause I, yeah. I feel, I really feel these stories are important. Yeah. One, because, well, I'll, I'll out myself right now I didn't do any of that and I'm still in this you know and and I have conversations with people who are younger than me and they're like well I'm in this job and I'm about to get a raise but I really I don't know want to go into politics but that I have to go entry level and I'm going to make less money and I tell them all the time I'm like listen <laughs> you're 32 okay you're not yeah. 22 but if you don't do it now you will never do it like do it now because so many times I said well that would take me three or four years and I don't want to and now what 10 years later I look back I'm like wow three or four years go quick I could have done that and been on a new journey so I think these stories are really important because they're so common like everything you're saying I relate to entirely I didn't take the road you took so okay. you know I think it's so important to share because people just see the after, like the prod, the end product, you know, like I go on Iconic and I, I'm like, oh my 
God, messengers, like how, you know, but there's a whole story behind that. It didn't happen overnight. And this is only the beginning. And I tell you, I tell you, like not following your path is lamentable, but following your path will also have moments of that, you know, where you have no security and, you know, you cannot live a conventional life and you'll have many ups and downs. That's generally also what happens. But you're right, the end product is way more satisfactory than the end product of not following what you meant, to, you know, what, you're, what you came here for. And I know that I came for this and I finally landed here now. But the road towards it, you know, looking back, I think, would I have done it again? Well, I, I would be too easy if I said yes, without a doubt. It wouldn't be my, my full truth because the full truth is it was very hard. It really was very hard. You know, that I, I really chose a, a road that was not, you know, and there was nothing being given to me or there was nothing easy and it was just obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. But I do know it, it forms you in a way that you become much more resilient to, to things in life and therefore stronger within. So like after, after I finished film school, um, I didn't film in a conventional way. You know, I didn't, I didn't like the formulaic way of, of uh, shooting films. Also, camera wise or visually, I'm not amazing either. <laughs> you know, so that's my, not my talent either. I, and I discovered my talent is more storytelling and, um, and, and, and whatever story is being told, it has to mean something. It really, truly has to mean something deeper. It has to open up another layer in a human being of discovery, you know? It has to tickle the senses and open the soul. And I realized that's important. And so whenever I had an idea for a film and I would present it, people would always be thinking, no, that's not commercially viable, what you want to do, you know? They just wanted the old zombie movies or whatever. And so my line of ideas was not, was not, the trend was not in. Now it is, which is great, but it wasn't before. Um, so again, for a few years, I kind of just was like, oh, so there's no work in this either. Again, doing odd jobs here and there, never having a lot of money, always struggling with money. Um, but then on, and I think you may have heard this already before in some other interviews or, or whatever, because I've, I've mentioned it so many times, but it's a, it's a pivotal point in life and and that is um that i did my ayahuasca experience um which i did on 10 10 10 in in england and that really changed everything for me and i've also said to people like ayahuasca is not something to take you know for a laugh or lightheartedly it's a, it's a serious choice that you make and it's a very very profound journey and it's not just the moment that you take it, it's profound, it's the years following the ayahuasca journey that are very important. When you start integrating what you've been shown and what I found so amazing about ayahuasca is, is that it removes illusion. Mm. So if I, if, if I wanted to see what, what is reality, real reality, then I would say ayahuasca shows you that. It shows you everything that is kind of illusionary in our, in our world. And um, it was a pretty hard journey to start with because I was shown how incredibly delusional I was myself in a, in a lot of ways. And I didn't think I was, but I was. And uh, so that was already, okay, amazing. But the good thing about the ayahuasca, it kind of goes like this, you know, you go through absolute, I mean, I don't know if you've, yeah, you've ever tried it. Yeah, I mean, full on, you know, the, 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 the low bits are just, torture you know looking at yourself looking at yourself in the mirror and then all these things breaking down about yourself it's just like oh my god i can't believe i ever thought that in my life or that i ever said this to this person and i even remember like in the ayahuasca experience i was seeing the spirit of the person that i had sort of not treated very well and i ended up kissing their feet you know to to apologize because i'd looked i had looked down on them um because I thought, you know, they didn't get it or whatever. But then I realized, no, every soul is precious, you know, and, you know, you really, you really honor the people around you. 
but on the on the up bits, I was also really shown like what I came here to do. It was it, it's it's an amazing plant medicine to have a look at, at at bringing you back to your core and and who you really are and why you came here. And it was so clear why I had come here. It was really like how can I put it into words that it doesn't show that that doesn't sound like oh I'm a you know, I'm a special person. It, it, it wasn't like that. Yeah, you are a special person. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't like that it was being shown. It was more like it's a special time. Mm-hmm. That's what's kind of shown. It's a, it's a really special time. And souls want to come into this time to be of assistance in however, however they can, you know. And well, we need them. <laughs> yeah, and I guess everyone is playing a piece, you know. And I came in with my little piece and... Um, yeah, I was really shown that this matrix thing was is absolutely real. It's absolutely real. There's and and I was even being shown it. I actually went out of my body and um, out of away from the planet, and I got stuck in the in the boundary of of the matrix. And it was a very intelligent um, construct, very intelligent, so intelligent that even benevolent forces didn't know how to crack the codes of it. And, um, and I saw that people were stuck in a, in a loop, uh, dying, coming back, dying, coming back, because they couldn't get out of these, these constructs. And I got stuck in it myself while I was out of my body. And it felt like it was literally 100 years because time kind of doesn't, you know, like the thing with ayahuasca is it releases DMT, dimethyltryptamine, and it's, it's a similar hormone that's released upon, upon death. So it's kind of, you have a near death experience and um, it felt like a hundred years that I was in there. And there were moments where I was sort of floating there thinking I'm so like, it's like a gray zone. And, and I realized the only way to get out of this is to get to reincarnate again into another body. And, and that's the only way, you know, you need to crack the code while you're in, in a body and then you can get out of the matrix, but not the other way around. And then I realized, oh, but I'm not dead. I still have a body sitting in this tent, in this yurt, where I'm having an ayahuasca experience. So I ended up finding my way back into my body. And I was, f- f- I was crying um, because I was so happy that I had the opportunity to be in a body to be able to do something about it. And I was like, wow, I've been given this beautiful this beautiful gift and I promise myself I will never ever waste this gift ever again you know that I can do something I'm allowed to help with this process to awaken people and to tell them look this is what's going on it's our duty to expand our consciousness and the way spirit told me it's like it's expanding our consciousness beyond the limiting boundaries of the matrix because the matrix is held together by a particular frequency. And as long as people think in a limited frequency band, they hold the matrix together. So it's the people who are holding it together. So I realized the power is with the people. It's, it, it, this is an absolute, this is a fact. The power is with people, not only by you know, standing on the front line in a, in a, during a protest, but the main power lies within the person and, 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 it, and their expansion of consciousness. So from that moment onwards, I was like, I'm not wasting any more time. This is all I'm gonna do. But obviously that meant I had to give up certain securities in my life and income. Um, I never really had a proper, proper relationship. Um, didn't have kids, wasn't so much my choice. It was unfortunately that I had problems. I couldn't really have them, but in the ayahuasca experience, I asked about that and I was like, oh, so children. (laughs) And um, I was shown beautifully how my soul had chosen not to do that. And um, that I wasn't supposed to do that at all. That um, I was told by spirit that I'd had already many, many children before in other realities and other lifetimes and Um, all the souls of the children came to me. They were all sat around me like huge numbers of kids and they were all saying, thank you, you don't have to this time. And 
I, it was it was so incredibly powerful. So I kind of like became okay with the not having children. And now looking back, I'm thinking, yeah, it was really good. I don't know how I would have dealt with life if I'd had children now during this COVID time, I probably would have found that too hard. But so, yeah, so no conventional relationship, no children and certainly no income because I just went fully focused for like, I need to wake people up. Oh my gosh, I need to do everything I can. So the first thing after the ayahuasca experience was a little docker called 2012, what on earth is going on? That was the first thing I did. Again, you know, you have no funding, so you just go out with your camera and you ask people to help and, 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 and do it all in your own time. And at the time I had a boyfriend who's still my best, one of my best friends now. We're not together anymore, but we're still amazing friends. And he was working at the time and he was very supportive uh, of me doing this. So that was lovely. Um, and after we broke up, I moved to New Zealand. Uh, this was back in 20, late 2011. And then I got the idea for Mind the Matrix, the, the film. And again, I was phoning, phoning, writing, writing to people. Please, can I, you know, have you got some funding for me? Because I need to make this film. And nobody was interested. Nobody was interested. Everyone's like, how is that going to be commercially viable? It's always the same, the same old story. Um, and so one day when I was in, uh, in Europe for, for production on a movie, so I sometimes did production uh, work on sort of mainstream movies, brought in a little bit of bread and butter, hated it, absolutely hated it. Couldn't stand the mainstream film industry, absolutely hate it. Um, but yeah, I was, um, I was in England and I, I'd given up on finding the funding for Mind the Matrix. So I had just made the decision to just make it without a budget. And I was just like, okay, I'll see how I'll live. I, I don't mind. I'll, I'll see how I'll um, make ends meet. And I, I was visiting a friend in the countryside near Glastonbury and there was this beautiful um, older lady. She was 89 at the time and she was she was running the, um, the International Essene Society. So she was kind of very, very deep into the whole subject of the Essenes and they started a massive organization. And I love, I love the, the Essenes and I, I read the Gospel of Peace and it's very beautiful. She was this beautiful lady, this older lady with silver hair. And I told her my story, you know, innocently, just at the dinner table, I, I'd already given up on the, on, on, on the funding side of things. And the next morning she came to me and she, she said, Christiana, I'm going to give you the money, you know. She went like that and I'm like, what? She said, yes, spirit told me to give you the money because you're going to bring in the golden light with this film. And I was like, wow, she said, how much do you need? And I obviously gave her the, the minimal, you know, cause I did, I felt I was like, this lady's 89 years old. She might not, you know, we, but she was fully compass mentors, like more than compass mentors, very spirited. So she gave me the money for it and dedicated the film to her, which was the first time I was able to just at least buy food. I couldn't pay rent. Um, I lived in a van, have had done for years already, live, just living in a van. And um, at that point, actually, I lived in a caravan <laughs> and I had my computer set up in this caravan and it was like dripping rain in. It had cockroaches this big walking around. And I just had about enough money to buy food and to pay camera people to film for me um, because I was presenting it, of course, so I, I needed people to, um, to film it. All very, very, very low budget. And I remember thinking like, wow, this is so rough, you know, like I, this is such a rough life, you know, in so many ways. I mean, there was also like other things going on that were very, very, very rough. I was just like, this is, this is really full on. Like, I, I don't know if it's supposed to like stay like this, you know, I, yeah. And anyway, so I managed to finish the film, you know, with all sorts of things happening, relationship troubles and no money and everything. And, and, and it got over a million views, um, the film. 
and it, it really went really well and it's it really helped people the comments were amazing i got a lot of people sending me messages saying can i translate can i do the subtitles for it in different languages so it appeared in lots of different languages and i felt like wow it's it was worth it you know but i still thought like my god i'm i'm, I'm entering a real poverty consciousness now with my life you know it shouldn't it didn't feel quite right you know that i i thought i shouldn't have to live like this and then later on, I made, made Mind the Matrix the series again with a, a benefactor who helped me to make it. But again, you know, it wasn't enough, really enough money for me to really, to really um, make ends meet properly. And then I got approached by Richard Willett from um, who worked for Iconic at the time. And he interviewed me for one of his podcasts and we got on like a house on fire. And he approached me, uh, no, it was actually Jamie who approached me um, after saying, we're coming to New Zealand, we're coming to film Dr. Robin Kelly. Um, and we were wondering if we can interview you as well. And I was like, yeah, of course, that would be amazing. So end of January, I think it was, end of January 2020, right before the pandemic hit, um, Richard and Jamie came to New Zealand and as soon as we met, we immediately started joking around. And it's, you know, like they have a particular kind of humor that I really love. Same with David Icke and Gareth. I mean, I just can't keep a straight face being around them. It's impossible. And uh, so we already hit it off, you know, laughing nonstop, really rude jokes and exactly how, what I love. And so I sent them a message after the, um, we actually recorded the whole series consciousness which you told me before we started recording you you watched yeah we i had didn't know it was there i was like wait a second oh my god i missed this whole thing <laughs> yeah yeah it's um it was very spontaneous they they were meant to interview me and i was i i said well i don't have that much well i've got, I've got something to tell but it would be more amazing to really get some experts on board and and and, and record a little series here while you're here because you're all the way we flew to the other side of the world you know Let, let's yeah. let's do something more so we did we shot consciousness and then after we finished i sent jamie an email and i said man we, we we're really getting on like we should be working together and he said well that's a coincidence because we were saying the same thing last night we should be working together so that was it so that's now you know i started working for them early may 4th of may 2020 so we're we're going towards two years now and um, and that really, I mean, if you talk, if you want to talk about an end product, you know, you know how you know a road full of obstacles can lead to something, you know, pastures, new pastures. Um, Iconic Media was the was a new life, it was really a new life where suddenly it was like coming together with your soul tribe and being together with your soul tribe every day at work everyone, you know, the same mindset. We're all about freedom and freedom of expression and, um, and, and, and soul growth. So, you know, if you have these basic principles in common, that's already a great, you know, starting point. And I, I have to say, I do feel lucky wouldn't be the right word because it's, it's taken a lot of hard work. Yes, exactly. Yeah, but it, it, it just feels like a beautiful, yeah, it feels like a great grace, you know, like of, you know, how the universe brought us all together. And, you know, the last two years have just been amazing, amazing. And it's expanding, it's expanding because we start, you know, Jamie started it off, Iconic Media, you know, it was his idea and people around him were like, oh, you know, it's going to be really hard to make something like this happen. You know, you have to, you know, other people have tried and hmm, I don't know how you can make this commercially viable. And all of that but he he's that guy i i really think he he came to this planet to do this and he chose a good bloodline you know to be born yes. into you know to sort of like get things going but he's just a natural and you know in the beginning he was just doing things and and whenever he made a mistake or did something wrong he would learn immediately from it and just step up and step up and step up and step up and um, and it's expanding really rapidly now. Yeah, I, I, I've seen him talk. I mean, obviously I don't know him, but it's funny because he's so 
like to me when I my first impression I think I'm a pretty good judge of like you know like essence of a person when I first meet them because I just listen and look you know and he's very quiet you know like he seems very soft-spoken very calm he, he definitely conveys this very calm air um very mature right? he's I know young. he's more mature very than mature. me yeah we have two people in our office that are like very young so Jamie's obviously the CEO and then we have yes. our um human resources Gina and they're both young and they're both they're both the most mature people in the company yeah, he's like an I old soul someone, they're old souls that's honestly. what I want to say yeah yeah I, yeah, yeah. I get that from him immediately uh, I saw an interview I don't know it was on YouTube somewhere very old they were in New York David was speaking and he was referring to him as David he goes well David you know we'll take David we'll do this and, and the interviewer goes uh, I'm sorry are you his, are you're his son or you're not really his son and and he goes no I'm his son and he goes oh okay I, I just want because you were saying he goes yes but when I give an interview I want you know I want to make it you know David is the person so I talked about I don't want to call him my dad whereas Gareth will go my dad you know we'll, yeah we'll yeah yeah or the dad. old so, man you know yeah and that was a few that was a while back when I guess David was speaking in New York so I saw that and I was like oh him you know like yeah. he's just very composed very different than david for sure uh just very like funny. i don't mean i don't know him but you know just in the way he speaks and you know he's just more like i'm behind the scenes kind of guy that's how, that's, that's my him. impression that, that, that's him and he and he does it with so much birth you know he's he, he's he's born to do this just like yes. gary you know david said it described it in a really good way about Gareth. he's like a right brain genius and I was like, that's such a cool way of putting it, you know, like Gareth is the, the entertainer, you know, yes. he needs to be in front of the camera and the way he cracks jokes, that's, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I sometimes say, dude, like, how did you come up with this joke and that quickly? That, that's mental. He just like goes boom, boom, boom like that. So it's clearly that's what he's meant to be doing. And then Jamie's sort of, you know, very at ease behind the scenes. And, you know, if he's already doing this at the age of 29 and he's learning so fast, you know, just watch this space because, you know, the sky's the limit. Exactly. Yeah, I definitely got that. And I was just like, wow, it's, it's very cool to see this all kind of evolving because, you know, like I told you, I started, you know, seeing David in interviews, particularly the London Real interview, you know, and then kind of getting away awakened through that reluctantly yeah. so many people talk about um um that interview that particular interview that that seems to really have done it well let me tell you i didn't know david ike existed so it wasn't no. even like yeah no i didn't I, I was never a political person i mean i don't want to make this about me but i, I didn't oh no care. i want to hear I want like to hear i was you. just you know i just want to live my life i want to travel i want to do things i thought most politicians i still do think this but like you know, not, it's not worth my time. It's all like a stage show. And, you know, I just, as long as I can live my life, I can live my life. Then, you know, obviously 2020 came, things changed. And I'll tell you the funniest, I will tell you how I discovered David Ike. It's in that London Real interview. It's insane. I was watching, I think I started getting into financial like fluency because, and so I was watching influencers on YouTube. And I don't remember who was, in, interviewing him but robert kiyosaki yeah this is like the weirdest thing mm -hmm. he was saying well look what's happening right now my friend brian rose interviewed some guy I can't remember his name youtube pulled it off and you know the the most popular you know live stream behind donald trump and it just got pulled you know this is the world we're living in and i have no idea why or what i'm not a huge kiyosaki fan i just wanted to get some intel on finances and i said well who's who's that like i got intrigued by that story he told he, he didn't even say the david's name he just goes he was interviewing some guy and boom it's off the internet and he almost got everything you know pulled all his content and i was like so I started research. I mean, I had plenty of time on my hands. We were all locked down. I was in California at yeah. the time. And I started researching. I'm like, who is this person? I don't even know why I would care. Normally I wouldn't. And that's when I found the interview. And I started watching it. And I was just like, you know, I, I know I already told you this, but I was, I was very uncomfortable with it. You know, I was like, 
Well, he's saying everything he's saying makes sense and he doesn't seem like he's doing it for, you know, a sensational purpose, but I don't know if I believe all of it, you know, whatever. I kind of like put it on the back burner, you know, and then as, you know, things were unraveling more and more and lockdowns and this, that and the other, I just had this uneasiness inside of me. I could not put it aside because I was really like, nah, that, I mean, some of it, but not all, like this is getting a little, you know, out there. And then I just, it would like haunt me. I would, couldn't stop thinking about it. Then I got his, one of his books, Human Race, Get Off Your Knees, The Lion Sleeps No More. And I read it front to back. I mean, I, reg- I gave my friend that copy and I wish I hadn't because he never even read it. it they're, they're intimidating. You know, it's like a 700 page book, but I had notes, highlights, you name it. And I was like, oh my God. And then I started watching all the interviews and I'm like, yeah, I hate to say this, but this is really what's going on. You know, it's quite obvious, you know, just as you just sit back and watch the show and you can see what's unwrapping, you know, what's unfolding. And then I just went bizonkers, tried to find anything I could about him. Yeah. And then I remember I, I watched his live stream, The Answer, and mm-hmm. I got the free trial for Iconic. And now I know why they take off the the David live events because that's what I like binged watched every single live and there are hours and hours and hours I just I just watched and watched and watched and watched and I was like oh my god this is amazing you know absolutely and I love that that happened to you because you know in a way David's work fast tracks you into the awakening and uh, oh I'm sorry I'm um, did you hear that WhatsApp yeah. thing. Sorry, I'll just. Uh, no worries. Well, I don't know how to. No, it should stop That's now. That's fine. Don't worry. Life happens. Um, but yeah, it, it really fast tracks you to um, to to awakening. It's it, yeah. because it's it, it's so concise. This information, you know, it's so and so grounded as well. You know, people all talk about. Oh, is he the guy who's the the you know the reptilian? Uh, yes. You know, the royal reptilians and and it's just like. Wow, really? After all his, this, this body of work he's got to offer, and all these books, all these people series. People don't want to believe and- it. People don't want to believe it. So they'll they'll grab onto the one thing that seems outlandish and just move on. And to be honest, it's funny because you're like telling your story and I've listened to David tell his story so many times. And he goes, when I go to speak, I couldn't even fill a phone booth. I remember he always said that, you know, and, and it's that's how the journey always starts. You know, like people think, you know, mm-hmm. oh, you're crazy. Why would you want to live like that? Or why would you give up this comfort or that comfort? And he had a family, which is, you know, pretty crazy to think that he just, and I think that's what actually inspires me about him the most. It's not mm-hmm. even his body of work. I just, I look into that man's eyes and he's like such a Taurus. He's like, I will speak my truth and I don't care. And that is such mm-hmm. a rare quality. And I think that's why I was very drawn to you too, because it's so like, you just feel it. You, you feel the authenticity. It's about so many of us, myself included, we don't, we don't feel comfortable being ourselves because part of that self could be something that we think is not going to be accepted. And, you know, back to what you were saying about your father, my mother was similar, you know, well, you're going to be a lawyer. And I'm, I kind of think I should have actually. I love to argue. I mean, I'll always give her that. I'm like, okay, you were right. I, should, I would have been the poorest lawyer on the planet because I would have been like, you know, bring me your week, bring me your, you know, those yeah. are people. That's when I get fired up, you know. So I'd be like pro bono all when the it's way. Injustice. Yeah, I would yeah. be broke, but yeah. I would have, been, I would have been that person. I almost like, gosh, I wish I was a lawyer right now because I would have been right there on the front lines. Yeah, but I, you know, I didn't go that way. I went to be an English major. But, you know, it's uh, it's just interesting because they're dealing, they're in a different framework than we are. You know, they're just worried about us. They're just trying to, you know, want us to be happy. And what they're happy is, is being secure, you know. So they're not trying to, because I, I loved music and I wanted to be like a musical journalist and I love to write. I never did any of that stuff because I was afraid to disappoint. I was told like, you know, materialism is really important. I was told, you know... You have to, you know, take care of yourself. You have to be successful in this world. And so I followed that. The matrix. <laughs> successful yeah. in the matrix, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, that's why I tell people, and I know I said this previous, you know, in the beginning of our conversation, when people tell me, like, well, I really want to do this, but I'm about to get a raise in this job. It's like, 
do it, please, from someone who's still in the matrix. Like I look back, I took time for granted. And what'll happen is you'll try to make the leap again and they'll offer you more money. The, the timing will just come, right? At, not even on purpose. Oh, it'll absolutely. just happen. Absolutely. And you'll go no, back it, to that. David talks about with Tico, you know, the with Tico, the archontic consciousness. It will always sense your next move and, and will offer you something great if you do this. Exactly. You know, and it's and it's so easy to fall for it. And it's, you know, this is this is um this is character development, soul development, this this journey, you know, to to start to really become aware. I mean, you just said it beautifully, you know, like about not being accepted and and, and because it is it's a very profoundly difficult feeling to not belong and to not be accepted. Um it's 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 hard, you know, and 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 I think for someone like David. I don't think it would have been it would have been hard on him as well it would have been very hard on him as well but i guess for him it was no longer a choice you know it was like you know he had his download um in peru and he obviously had this reading with the, with, with the psychic lady and the and, ayahuasca too he talked about that in brazil yeah, so. yeah and if, if that if something like that happens you're, you you become a liar to to who you really are if you if you don't follow that but it's still damn hard to be you know he says it himself as well to be ridiculed in in in, in wherever he went and to be laughed at, at i mean nobody wants that nobody wants that no and i think the most powerful message he ever gave to me was like the heart knows what's right the heart never questions the consequence of doing what's right it just simply does it and uh, we are, I think these past two years has never been more apparent that we are so out of the heart, you know, mm. because, you know, we're seeing things happen to children. We're seeing things happen to, to elderly people. We're seeing things happen to everyday people. We're seeing things happen to athletes. We're seeing things happen to, you know, we're all being impacted by this. And it's like, we're just sitting around doing nothing because we're afraid you know, somebody's going to tell us that we're crazy or we're a conspiracy theorist or, you know, whatever the case. And uh, it's even with all this political correct, correct nonsense that's happening now, you know, like it, it, even if it sounds right and it sounds fair, if my heart says doesn't feel right, then that's more important. It doesn't matter if it sounds politically correct or right. You know, if it doesn't feel right, it's not right to you. You know, and so the, the cultivation of of this this heart muscle, you know, to really start to be able to tap in and tune into that and follow that is probably the most important thing we can do at this time. Yeah, exactly. And and I felt that so strongly from you, you know, when I watched your work and, you know, I, I felt kind of like a kindred spirit, you know, when I watched you, I'm like, well, she's way more out there and evolved than I am but I identify so much with what, and this is actually why I started this podcast because I'm like, I wanted these people. Like I, I feel like I have found my tribe and a lot of the people that I was watching. And, uh, when I try to talk to other people about it, they're just like, Oh, okay. You know, like if you, you can get to a certain point with like superficial politics of what, you know, the current events of the day. But when you start to go into another direction, it's like, Oh, oh yeah. All right. You know, and, uh, I wanted to have these conversations. So I'm like, well, you can't just write somebody and be like, Hey, I think you're awesome. Can I just start talking to you? <laughs> you know, you gotta, yes, you you gotta build something You ha like that corny saying, if you build it, they'll come. You got to kind of bring them out into Muhammad. And, uh, that's why, you know, I want to have these conversations and hope that other, other people out there, that appreciate these kind of conversations because I always want to go into the past. I want to know, I want to yeah. know the ugly stuff. That's when you're like, yeah. Oh, should I stop now? You want me to talk about no, because this is to me the most important things that I want people to hear because it's not easy. It's not pretty, you know, following your heart, but the reward is there. So, you know, we'll get to that, but people need to understand we don't want to suffer at all anymore. We just want any kind of inconvenience, you know, that no, exactly. there is some. Yeah, there is, it, it, there just is. And also, you know, when you, when you approached me and I, you know, saw what you wanted to do, 
I, you know, the thing is I react to authenticity. So if I feel someone's being authentic, I'm automatically attracted to working with this person or hanging out with this person. So anyone who follows their calling in an authentic manner um, will automatically draw in, you know, a good reality because they're being, they're being real. And, you know, I, I don't think I'm authentic enough personally yet. Like my, you know, I strive for a hundred percent authenticity in everything I do. And like, because I'm an editor as well, you know, when I edit my own work, a lot of the time I'm like, yeah, that could have been more authentic. You know, you could have been more real there or more real there. So I, I, I want to, I want to become way more myself and, and I, I, I want to invite the world to do it because that's when the world really starts to kick off, you know, in a good way. When everyone starts to become the unique blueprint, we're going to see some immensely incredible changes and not you know cookie cutter you know cardboard cutouts walking on the street you know no we want people to to cultivate their you know their realness yeah and when can we like shift the conversation where like you were telling me you're pitching your stuff to people and they're like well that's not really commercially viable it's like we're so stuck in this mindset of monetizing everything how can i monetize my passion <laughs> You know, how can I, and there's a book, Elizabeth Gilbert wrote a book. I think it's called Big Magic. I read it years ago. I honestly can say this book was awesome. When I started this podcast, a lot of people are like, oh, maybe you can get out of corporate America and go into, I said, no, I'm not going there. I remember she said she, for decades, she suffered and she calls it her, her shit sandwich. Like you, if you know your passion, you have to be able to eat the shit sandwich. If you're not, <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. And she said the number one thing that she never did was put pressure on her passion to support her. Never. She said, I never did that. I never, I never required my writing to be my source of income, to be my mm -hmm. everything. I just wrote and I wrote and I, I waitressed, I did, I did dishes, whatever I had to do, clean houses so that I made the time I could support myself so I could write. Yeah. And I said, you know, I think that is the best approach because when we constantly locked in the matrix mindset of monetizing, okay, well, I love to do this. How can I make money out of it? You go off. That's it. Cause now you're just stuck in the matrix mindset. That's because exactly that's how you're it. going to monetize that's it. That's exactly how you it. think. The matrix is a frequency. It's a particular frequency. And as soon as you buy into it, you're in that frequency. And so you have to play that game then. And then, yes, you do need to do the money thing then because you're in that frequency. But as soon as you lift yourself out of that, there's different rules. And you'll start attracting things in a whole different manner. You know, you, 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 things will come to you that you have no idea how they came to you. You're like, how did I just manifest that? Well, simple, you weren't in the matrix frequency and the matrix frequency is one of fear. So, you know, you'll need the money because, you know, your fear is too high to manifest. So you'll need the money to manifest what you need. Whereas as soon as you out of that and you have, you don't have that fear, then things can come from left, right and center and, and above and beyond, you know, it, it, that's just yeah. the way it works. And sometimes you have to suffer a little. And, and I just, I think your example of mind the matrix was perfect. Cause you're like, okay, nobody will spark this. I'm going to like, and I feel like that's the tipping point where yes. the universe says, okay, yeah. she wants this, you know, yeah. like we're going to give her rejection. We're going to give her rejection. We're going to give her rejection. See what she does. Like you could have just went back to the drawing board and said, okay, well, I'll make it kind of like the movie, The Matrix, you know, more commercially viable or yeah. whatever the case, you know, yeah. but you, you stuck to your guns. You're like, all right, fine. Then universe, I'll do it myself. And that's when the universe said, all right, we got you. You're in, you're yeah, and that universe being the frequency, you know, like it's, it's, it, it, it's, 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 you can simplify it even, you know, just it's, it's simply a frequency change. And there's, immediately a different reality around you and immediately different different rules that apply to that it's, it's, it's really that simple yeah it's it's amazing i mean if you stay true to yourself then i feel like your reality will reflect that yeah eventually it will have to it's that that's just it will have to there's no other way because that's just the what that's the, that's the nature of how reality works but like again <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, that's the code. Yeah. And so the awakening of humanity is all about awakening to that frequency of this matrix that's keeping you in the loop. 
as soon as you awaken from that, naturally your frequency will change and this matrix will literally crumble apart. I've seen it happen. It will just crumble apart. And then, and then what's really meant to be here will appear, which is, a, which is the real world, basically. And I'm, I'm, I'm feeling personally, I'm already living in that um, probably about 80% of the time I'm already feeling like even though the external is not fully reflecting it yet because we're in mayhem, but just the way I'm feeling in my in my in myself, um, that 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 naturally comes from you know step you know stepping into a different frequency and suddenly you start to experience the beginnings of this new world. It's it, it's just in the beginning stages now, and and I know a lot of people you know they're still like hurting and suffering and 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 desperate because they're seeing what's happening in the external but that's why it is so important to shift that frequency within and immediately the way you perceive that external world will change and and, and laughter will come back fun humor love care all these elements will come back and they and they pierce through everything they pierce through every illusion that still stands mm, that's beautiful and I definitely feel that in your work. So with that, that brings us into Thank a you. nice, uh, your, your work brings us, brings me anyway, into like another world. It's very cool. It's very kind of has this like ethereal, light, bright kind of feel. Um, how, like, how do you get a project going? Like something like divine intervention. I actually watched the live stream. I didn't even know what was happening. And I was on YouTube and it was like, Hey, our live streams kicking off of, of divine okay. intervention. And I'm like, Oh, well, I'm going to watch this. Sure. I'm, I'm around. And like, how do you get these ideas? Because they're kind of otherworldly. And then how do you find your guests? I mean, yeah, it's these... a stream thing. I mean, uh, divine intervention was actually Jamie's idea. Okay. Um, and it's a team thing. And so it's like, Oh, I know Eric from Danica. Oh, and I got in touch with him and he'll come on. And of course, David, you know, yeah, that's, that's part and parcel. <laughs> kind of have a little in with him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah got a little. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So, and, and then, uh, I, I guess to be honest, the iconic guys, they obviously have a lot of context. So that helps. And then we're working with this incredible, um, CGI team as well. Mark and Lucy from Pixel DNA, and they've really helped, you know, the level rise above anything that would be considered low budget, you know, even though we're still working on very micro budgets because we're trying to set this whole thing up, you know, and if you're, if you're coming in to, you know, to, to work with or for Iconic thinking, you know, it's a gold mine. No, that's not what we're doing right now. You know, we're basically putting a whole new template out there. And, um, and we're saying to people, stop paying your TV license because what you pay for your TV license is, is the same cost as a, as, as a year's membership with Iconic. And, um, and even if people say, oh yeah, but I don't, you know, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be watching a lot. You know, at the end of the day, if I wasn't working for Iconic now, I would be a member. Yeah. I don't watch a lot of stuff either, but I would be a member because the, the, it, it's, the, it's what they're doing. It's like what they're trying to do. They're basically saying to mainstream media, forget it. We're going to do our own thing. And we need to support that in whatever way we can. This is so important to get this off the ground. And yeah, it is I feel it's actually a bargain. I'm, I'm a, obviously, I'm a subscriber. And it's like yeah. 70 something pounds, which is like $100 a year for me. Yeah. And I, I yeah. feel like for the content, I've seen it grow because I was, I jumped on board in the beginning and I cannot believe, and for people who don't know what Iconic is, it's a Netflix, alternative Netflix. That's the best way. I hate to yeah. interject Netflix into alongside of Iconic, but that's essentially what it is. A bunch of series, very spiritual content, financial. I just watched a couple Bitcoin uh, documentaries. You know, I, I find myself on there more and more. I'm always looking a lot of great podcasts like Glitch in the Code, yeah. Richard Willard, who's amazing. We're in the first, you know, we do as well. And we're, we're going to start doing comedy and we're going to start doing drama and fiction as well. So, you know, feature films and series. That's, um, that's our next stage as well. And the thing is, you know, we want to, 
we want to make productions that are not formulaic, but again, authentic. So the word authentic comes back again. Because when I, whenever I go to Netflix, I, I, I just feel I'm being manipulated, you know, by whatever I'm being shown. It's like preemptive programming. And it's, it feels to me like whatever they're showing us, they want us to become, they want us to create whatever we're being shown in, in, in the world. You know, and, and that's not a creation I want to see in this world. Most of the things that are being shown are all about dystopian realities um, in the future. And I, do I want to create it? No, then why am I watching this? Why am I watching this? That makes no sense. That's not to say that you should now watch Iconic and only watch Love and Light, because we're not doing that either. You know, we want to be realistic and, you know, there is dark and light. And so we want to, you know, we want our productions to reflect that as well. Because I think it's also not a good idea to then, you know, create a platform and it's all love and light. That that I don't think that that's where we're meant to be heading. We're we're meant to be heading towards real reality. Yeah. What else is out there beyond, you know, what we're seeing, what we're experiencing? You know, yeah. I think that's really yeah. important. Question your reality. You know, see beyond yeah. what's right in front of you. Know that there's other really fascinating. <laughs> life forms or whatever you know even if you can't see it it's not important it's just you know that it's not just us you know i i, I just i'm very i can't believe in such a short time how much content how how it's expanded so much yeah um, it's very exciting it's yeah it's great. and it's you know and it's also really important that we you know all of us that we work together you know, because that to me is the new world, the new earth, not the new world. I, I need to be careful when I say the new world because it, it can be, it sounds a bit like the new world order. So I'm new earth, you know, I, I see us supporting each other and helping each other. And it's not just like our business and your business and competition and things like that. It's like, no, how are we going to work together to, you know, create all these amazing projects on the planet? Yeah, I'm bringing real people. Like when I watch right now with Gareth, at first, I'll be honest, because I'm American, I'm like, mm, you know, this isn't, I, and I, I realized my programming, because I'm like, this is kind of like, very low key, you know, <laughs> whereas, you know, like, who's our conspiracy researcher, Alex Jones, you know, I think he epitomizes the whole bravado of American everything in media and film. And I, I'm not necessarily a fan, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not neither here nor there. It's just, you know, I'm like looking a little more for that bravado. And then yeah. I'm like, I step back up for myself and I said, you know what? But yeah, what what have you been programmed to expect? You know, it's these are so real people sharing real stories, being mm -hmm. allowed to share their stories, not having to sensationalize them or, you know, dwell on negativity all the time. I'm so used to that. You know, it's like a huge tabloid culture. We're so, you know, like ingrained and in sensationalizing everything. So That's now right. I'm like, this is You're awesome. So we're used to getting that dopamine release, you know, like oh, excitement, oh, excitement and all the time like that. And it becomes addictive and we find it really hard then to actually just <sighs> listen to what this person is telling without all the, you know, all the, the frills and, you know, you know, like have it a little bit more, yeah, realistic, I guess. Yeah, I'm like, who's that person? Oh, I don't know that person. I've never heard of that. Like, that's good. That's the mm -hmm. point. You're gonna hear. About, you're gonna hear who they are now. You're gonna hear their story now, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I really enjoy that aspect. I, and it's fine because like you start to see your programming. Because I'm not used to this. This isn't what we typically see. So I've kind of like pulled myself back and said, well, why is this not resonating? Because it's pretty darn good. What's going on here? Um, yeah. So yeah, that's and, been and I guess you know, like just to be realistic, you know, not all content is for everyone, and that's why we have a wide variety of of shows anyway. So that is, it's we're not just doing one thing, you know. We're doing, you know, like the Wisdom Keepers, for instance. You know, there's a whole audience that is really into the Holy Grail, Mary Magdalene, all of, you know, all of those kind of subjects. And then there's another audience that are much more into hardcore conspiracy theories and stuff or they're just on the channel because they like health and well-being. So there's something for everyone. Yeah, but actually I really enjoy it. I just had to kind of deprogram. Yes. To, to, to enjoy it. Because sometimes yes. you don't, 
it's not actually even about not enjoying it. It's just being programmed into the cyclical thinking of like, well, it's not flashy. It's not, you know, a celebrity, celebrity, so to speak. But yeah, no, definitely. There's certain things that I like, certain things I don't, and that's totally natural. Um, One thing I love is messengers. Yeah, you like that, huh? Yeah, we've had some really good responses on it. I love it. I just, I love the guests you have. I have no idea where you find them. Uh, but you know, I think they're awesome and they're so different. Yeah. Uh, I was actually going to start this interview. (laughs) I recorded a clip of you with, uh, Annalie Nell and like right out of the gate. I'm originally from New Jersey. Enough said and Northern Jersey. So we're like, kind of like New Yorkers in a suburban version. So when I heard you, I can't remember the exact verbatim, but I mean, oh, right out of the gate, she said, well, you know, life is hard or something like that. And you're like, no shit, no shit, Sherlock. Oh, <laughs> I just started, I said, I don't know, maybe in one of those past lives, she was a Jersey girl. Cause that, I oh, just really? like, immediately I was like, oh, I, yes, yes. I remember that baby. I remember that. And I was, I was in a very, I was quite cynical. I was going through quite a cynical phase because I just thought, oh, sort of. And she's light as air. I mean, even her voice, everything. So, uh, yeah. And I, I like that evolution of those conversations because I could feel tension at times, which is great. You know, like, no way, you can't, no one could be that Zen, you know? And I could feel like resonance and, you know, this like push and pull. And I love that because that's oh. real, you know, oh, that's, that's real. Awesome. You have these ebbs and you have these flows. And then, um, you know, Jason Harrison, I really, I was like, and I felt kind of, you were like that too, like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like he's, cause he's more like direct. He's more, you know, like, I don't know. It's just a different, totally different, but just as great, you know, but everyone's so different and everyone brings the same kind of feeling to the table of mm-hmm. having established this kind of level of knowing self-knowledge, peacefulness, but so differently. So different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, what you'll like the future um, seasons as well, because we've got some cool people planned in and um, for messengers again. And did you know with Jason Hairston that we were, he was in America and I was in the UK when we were filming it? I was going to ask you that. I was, because I'm like, how did he get there? And I was, honestly, it didn't occur to me till the second time around that I watched all the episodes. And I was going to ask you that. Yeah, well, his his green screen was better than mine, basically. Like his one looks like completely real. And my one, there's like a few blips. You know, but we just made it look like we're in the same place. And it I was think it so great. Weird. It didn't yeah, we, occur to me. Honestly, yeah. Until the second time. It, 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 and yeah. Sandy Ingham, I mean. And, and here's the thing. I was a latchkey kid. I was raised with a single parent. And I spent a lot of time around older people. My great aunts, my grandparents. And that's another thing that really resonates with me in your work. You have a lot of older people with a lot of knowledge and that's something i feel we have we're losing rapidly like we're not appreciating i've had friends who were in their 80s you know and they were good friends of mine because these are like the true treasures you know trove of like life knowledge and i love that about your work you do thank you for seeing that i'm really grateful that you just mentioned that because that's one of my key principles is to bring the wise elders back on, onto the screen and really honor them for what they're, for what they're offering. Uh, it's one of my, my, my key inspirations to do. So I'm really happy that you noticed that. Oh yeah, because I've always connected with older, I mean, I hate to say it, I don't know how else to describe it. That's for lack of a, like older, I don't mean it like that, but I mean, I've always- I don't do politically correct, so you can say whatever yeah, you want. Yeah, I mean, no, I know. I just feel like it's trivializing. I don't know how elders, I guess I could say, mm. I've always connected with yeah. elders. I've always wanted to learn more about their lives, you know, ask them questions. I have a neighbor, he's right next to me. We go for walks all the time with my dog and he's lived in my town 
his entire life in the same house. Oh, and really? so when we go on his golf cart and he starts, I'm like, well, what was it? He's like, oh, these were all orange groves. You know, this was all just land. You know, this downtown didn't exist. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. You know, like they just have access to memories and knowledge that we were not taught purposefully. And, you know, mm -hmm. we don't, we don't really think about. So I love that aspect. I've always gravitated to older. I've always felt very comfortable yeah. with elderly people or yeah. elders, I want to say, because I spent so much time with them, you know, and yeah. I was very well, close to I, my I totally resonate with that. Totally resonate with that. It's, it's Sandy amazing. Ingham, too. I mean, Sandy Ingham, I know. Uh, He's I nice. just, She's Told like, you, I wound up binge watching that whole thing. I was like, oh, okay, I'll watch this over the week. And then I was like, oh, I no, I got to know. Because you're like, in the next episode, I'm like, no, I got, I have, no, I'm sorry. I got to keep going. Got to keep well, going. Well, I'll tell you, there's something cool coming then because we're doing, a, we're, we're editing a film out of it as well called Heaven's Messenger. Uh -huh. And we're going really like, we're seeing her doing readings and um, uh, her, we're doing the drawings where, you know, well, you'll see you'll see what's going to happen but it's going to be um, a very very epic film yeah as it was building i was catching i'm not going to give it away but i was when she kept saying leo i was i already and you know what is so crazy i'm not kidding you i was i've started to get into tarot cards my i have cousins who own a wiccan shop in jersey and and they do readings and i've just been drawn to it a lot recently and i was shuffling my deck of cards when she started talking about talking about tarot with her daughter. And I was like, oh, this is creepy. But I I I knew I was getting, I was starting to feel like, okay, I know who, I know who this person, who this spirit oh. is that's that's with her. Oh. But um, and I remember actually prior, because I watched like as much David as I can every day, um, he was talking about visiting her and a girl that he had once fancied and she drew this girl he never knew what happened to her and and, and she drew her and then to, and then so as soon as i saw you talking i said oh my god they brought her you know because i was very intrigued by him telling that story i'm like who is yeah. this person and you know what what is she all about that's really cool. yeah well apparently since that interview her phone has been ringing non-stop so <laughs> oh i'm sure i want to have a reading with her yeah she's she's pretty amazing yeah i mean Honestly, Christiana, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I, I think I, I feel like I could talk to you forever in a day. I've not talked in, in, in the form of a monologue for that long, for a very long time, because I'm used to asking the questions, you know? So for me to speak, again, it's been a long time. And actually, it's been quite cathartic. So thank you for that. Oh, no. I mean, I, you, you always struck me as a very special person. And I wanted to hear your story. And I feel like people need to hear your story because it's it's everyone's story. You know, you just, you're having the happy ending. You're starting, I'm not ending, you know, the happy beginning. You're experiencing, you're experiencing, you're far along, in my humble opinion, you're far along where, mm -hmm. you know, you, your heart is, wants you to be. And so there's so few people out there doing that. And, you know, you're still so young and I'm just so inspired. So I feel like a lot more people will be too, because, you know, it's not, everything's mainstream we need to get this stuff out there absolutely and more and more people will start doing it because you always have pioneers doing stuff and then there's the second layer and the second and the second and and but the circle gets bigger and bigger every time so i think you know when, when people start noticing hey the world is changing it's happening i'm going to step forward now you know that's the i mean i would be i would you know, that's the world I want to see. I don't want to die before I've seen that happen on a mass scale. Yeah, I'm really hoping that'll be in our lifetime. I mean, it's just, it's an exciting time. It's a scary time. You know, I, I, I definitely fluctuate between those two feelings from day, literally from day to day. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it is a time of great opportunity. I, isn't there some kind of Chinese proverb or something that says like great, a time of great danger, but a time of great opportunity. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm curious to see where humanity, because that's, that's where we're, everybody's looking for the hero, but it's like, you no, you need to look in the mirror. The, we're the, the heroes. Hero. Yes. You know? This is a time for courage. This is a real time for courage. And the fact that you're incarnated at this time here is already courageous. And to then, you know, follow your blueprint is the next step of, 
of courage. Yeah, and with that, I just want to ask one other thing because the, the purpose I, I wanted to keep this podcast in the framework of like future. Because yes, if we win this, you know, I do feel it's a spiritual battle. We win the spiritual battle. Where do we go from there? Because we can never go back to where we were. We always say, oh, I want to go back to normal. We can't do that, you know? So I guess in the sense of, I, I feel like you're not, a, not, to, not to give you the pressure of dubbing you an expert, but you're really good at following your heart and you're really also great at filmmaking. So what do you see the future of those two areas? Like how yeah. people will self-realize and also what kind of content you know because we're, we're so far off right now as far as what mainstream is mm. the way i see it is um i don't see it as winning because if we see it as winning to me it would look like it's a battle yeah. and it's a battle of us the good against the bad and i think the the real break breakthrough happens when we go beyond that duality when we go beyond the game of you know, it's like a tennis game. You're doing this all the time, duality, duality, good, bad, good, bad. It's all the same. It's all part of the matrix. That's what they do in the matrix. It's like, we'll, we'll put some light, we'll put some dark and that will keep them titillated and, and engaged and, you know, distracted all the time. The key is to stop thinking about what's going on out, out there or we'll stop thinking that's a bit much to ask, but to focus less attention on that and to really start going beyond it and to start, I don't know almost how to describe it, but it's like a set in movement an energy of, from the inside out, at, which is based on joy, on love, on allowing yourself to be who you are. And, and, and once that starts to be set in motion, the reality outside of us changes naturally you don't even have to conceptualize it beforehand you don't even have to use your mind to think about it because it's something that that has to happen it's cause and effect it's like once the energy here starts moving and you start you start expressing who you are saying what you are expressing who you are doing what you feel you need to do your creativity is not created by you your creativity comes through you. And the only way that can come through you if you are, if, if the vessel is, is open enough and active enough for that energy to start working through. And, and then this world is just gonna do its thing. I mean, you'll be, once it starts happening, it already is happening, but once it starts happening on a larger scale, you'll be just as curious and surprised about your own creations as someone who will be looking at you you know it, it, it you you don't know what's working through you it's just coming through you but i think as humans we're too focused on having the mind trying to conceptualize things that's the whole idea we don't have to do that the nature of of love is that it will always be fractal and it will always start creating um, realities based on the love that emanates from us. So we give too much attention to the mind around these things. And that's what worries people sometimes. They think, oh, what's going to happen after this? You know, how are we going to do this? You don't have to worry about that. I know that that's truth. That's beautiful. I'm so glad I asked that question. Yeah, I'm glad you actually asked that too, because sometimes I notice I'm saying something and it's helping my mind, you know? So it's like even, it's, it's like a part of me saying this, but my mind also needs to hear it. It's like, yeah, yeah actually I don't have to conceptualize this. You know, it's, we've done that so much already. We're trying to control everything, you know? We're trying to organize control. We don't have to. Yeah, I definitely, yeah. I, I'm, I err towards that type A kind of thinking you know um so that's that's awesome thank you and then of course where can people find you uh what you, you've given us tidbits of other projects you have coming up but you know yeah. we'll take this opportunity to just share with everyone yeah so my work is all on iconic now uh, i-c-k-o-n-i-c -O -O iconic from the ike name .com. and i'll put the link too definitely. yeah so it's all on there now um i i, I just work solely with them 
now. And um, we're, like I said, we're gonna do some fiction, some comedy. We're gonna create an incredible um, series soon um, based on, uh, I might have to send you the information on that. It's based on um, books by uh, John V. Panella, I think his name is. Um, and it's the um, Divine Secret Garden series and the um, Time Loop Chronicles. And um, yeah, it's, it's all a big mystery, these books. Uh, the writer cannot be found anywhere. The publisher cannot be found anywhere. And it's basically a fictional series that, that, that shows humanity and how to step out of the, out of the matrix. But the, the tools that are being given are real. The story is fictional. Um, and we're now looking into um, creating a, a, you know, creating a series out of this film. So that's hopefully what I'm going to be working on this year. Okay. Also making a production about David Icke's life, you know, his life story. We're going to be doing that. We're going to be creating. Will that be like Renegade, or is it going to be a little bit different? It's going to be our own. So it's going to be much. I mean, I love Renegade. It's lovely. Um, but we're going to go a little deeper. Um, you know, really going into. David's youth as well, and what made him become the way that he is. So that's going to be sort of a long-term project that we're doing. Um, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of really awesome productions lined up. I can't, I can't wait. And we were starting Iconic America now. Um, oh, in Austin, right? Yeah. Yeah. What about Florida? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they have been talking about Florida as well, actually, interestingly. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's talk after the interview about some <laughs> oh, I don't. collaborations. Yeah, I would love to just be in the vicinity of that happening. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's talk after about that. I've got some some ideas. And your your website, I will say I tried to access it last night and I panicked because it's down. <laughs> oh, my website's down? Yeah. Oh, right, that's, that's possible. I mean, I yeah, so I'm on christianofreich.com. I'll check why it's down. Um, I'm still going to post it though. I'll post the link there. Yeah. And we post links of our productions on my Instagram, Christian of Reich. Yeah. Christian of Instagram that. and also on our iconic accounts on all social media. People can see what, what's, what's, what's on. Okay. I yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I'm going to stop the recording, but I would, if you can hang on for one more second, that'd be great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate everything for sharing so much of your life and your spirit and, you know, your love. I think it really came through. I'm excited. I'm so excited to get this out there so people can see it. Um, so, yeah. Thank you so much, thank Christiane. You, thank you because you, you, you did a great job. Oh, thank you so yeah, much. You made me feel very comfortable. So, thank you. Awesome. Thank you.